just realized what a goofy smile I was just making. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, let's see, we are live and I'm gonna call up this video here on Facebook so I can see who's hopping on. <laughs> just realized what a goofy Audio smile. Audio is good. All right, perfect. So I can see some people hopping on here. La la la, I'm gonna wait for a few more folks to join us before I get talking here about my topic today. <sighs> Sunday, October 25th already. These, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this last year and the months have just been flying by so quickly. It's, it's interesting. Hi, Terry. Terry saying hi from, looks like the UK. So I see a lot of people hopping on here. Please let me know where you're joining from. Where are you watching from? Where in the world are our viewers at? Where are viewers at right now? Hi, Brigitte, so good to see you. So, look at all these beautiful people hopping on. I'm sure my mom will be hopping on soon. I see people from all over the place. Let me know, shout out where you're watching from. Last week we had people from all over across the globe everywhere from I think it was Hong Kong Australia obviously North America where the majority of our viewers and our rhythmic guests come from wow here we go Poppy's watching from Northern California Teresa's watching from South Florida Gary's saying hello from Laguna Beach California Rachel's watching from Colorado I've got Mayor watching from Burlington Vermont so fun <sighs> so, so beautiful. So if this is your first time coming across this uh, Arrhythmia video, so you'll see um, that this is the Arrhythmia Facebook page that I'm coming to you live on. My name is Meg Pearson. I'm first and foremost the, the chef in charge of the cuisine at Arrhythmia Life Advancement Center, and we are a incredible healing, I can't even say, like it's not even a retreat center, it's an oasis, um, here in Guanacaste, Costa Rica, where I'm coming to you live from coming to you live from my kitchen, um, but we specialize in helping people reconnect to their truth and reconnect to their soul through many different modalities. Um, and probably the most popular is the plant medicine modality where we offer four ceremonies a week. We also have breathwork ceremonies, which is a really powerful technique to reconnect you to your body and your emotions through your breath. We also have meditation, yoga, we have um, a colon cleanse center, we have a spa with mud baths, a gym, uh, massage therapy, and of course, uh, farm to table style organic cuisine by curated by yours truly after studying a lot about plant-based cuisine over the last decade, as well as working very closely with the shaman and the medicine helpers at Rhythmia. Who else do I've got here? I've got Ian watching from Louisiana. Pamela saying hello from Ohio. Mar Marike is watching from Denver. Oshan is saying hello from NYC. So yeah, this is the big news, right? So, okay, there's two pieces of big news. A little a piece, a macro in the Rhythmia world, the big news is that Rhythmia is reopening in exactly one week. This coming Saturday, we welcome our first round of guests since March, um, and we'll be checking in guests on Saturday and as well as one week from today on Sunday. So we're very excited about that. So we have a an amazing group of people. Uh, I see Lana is watching from Canada. Lori is watching from, is VA Virginia Beach? <laughs> I'm so bad with the shorts, especially when they're the short forms, when they are from of the American persuasion, being a Canuck, as I am a Canadian. Yon says, yes. Levi, my partner is me. Levi and my, my daughter, Kobe, are watching from Kobe's bedroom right now. She just woke up from her nap. So good to see you guys tuning in. Nixon's saying hello. Hi, guys. So this is the big news, Rhythmia. We are so excited that we're finally reopening. We closed, we've been closed since mid-March. Um, so I have been coming to you live from my kitchen. The, the big news in micro world, in the smaller scheme of things, in my world, as you may have noticed if you've been tuning in over the last year, that I'm back in my condo. So we, my partner and I, took a little break from our condo during, we call it, we're not to, to go move to what we're now fondly referring to as our pandemic house which is a beautiful little home just outside of Tamarindo here in Guanacaste where we live. Um, so we took a little break from this condo for the pandemic to just get outside of the city. This is not a city, it's a, it's a small surf town, but to just get out into nature. So we had our, our a little country home that we spent the last five months in. Um, but now we are back in the heart of Tamarindo, back in our condo, back in my kitchen, this beautiful kitchen that I absolutely adore and love. 
So you'll be seeing me maybe live from this kitchen a little bit more, but most likely next weekend I will be coming to you live from Rhythmia. So I'm super stoked about that to get back into my outdoor kitchen there. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about was a couple of things. Hi, Nixon, good to see you. Lauren, yes, she's excited we're reopening. Maureen is watching from Norway. Um, the thing I wanna to talk to you about is this new normal, right? So we're all um, coming back from this pandemic in whatever timeline makes sense to us personally, makes sense to where we live in the world. I know, you know, in Canada, they're, they've had a bit of a, a second wave that they're going through right now. So I know that there's uh, some places there that are still a bit shut down. Here in Costa Rica, we are reopening and you may have heard or read on the news that as of November 1st here in Costa Rica, there is no more COVID test requirement, which was what for the last three months, any tourist that was coming to Costa Rica had to um, have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of arriving, that has been thrown out the window. So that's very exciting for, for people to be able to come here. Of, of course, we're being very cautious um, because of that, because that means there will be more untested travelers in and around Rhythmia and, and Tamarindo. Um, but it is great news for the tourism and for a lot of the local economy here. Um, so we're coming back to that new normal. And of course, we're gonna have uh, different protocols in place in life, in the day-to-day, -day, as well as at Rhythmia. So very excited about that. Becky saying hello from Leduc, Albert, Leduc, Albert? Is that Leduc, Albert, Canada? Is that right? <laughs> Side note, this morning I had some friends over for coffee and obviously here in Costa Rica we speak Spanish and I speak English and I was really tired because I didn't sleep very well last night. And all of a sudden I said, je suis fatigué. What? French. I haven't spoke French in like 20 years. No, more than 20 years. Probably 25, 30 years I haven't had to speak French. And all of a sudden I had this French sentence pop into my head. So je suis fatigué means I'm tired. And in Spanish we would say, I would say, yo soy muy cansada. Like I'm very tired. But for some reason French came out. And I thought that was very interesting. My friend who was visiting thought that it was Creole. <laughs> he was like, where? You speak Creole? Creole? And I was like, no, it's French. So that's very funny. But I believe they are very similar. Good to see you, Nixon. Hello, Ramona. R Raymond, sorry. Ramon is watching from Hawaii. So good to see you. Um, okay, so new normal. Um, I wanted to just talk about two quick things. So the fact that my partner and I, so we, like many people, were scared when this whole thing happened back in March. I mean, it happened a lot sooner in other areas, but for, for a lot of the world, it was March where things got a little bit serious. So we got scared and we didn't know what the future hold held. So we moved in, we moved to this house that we thought we would fall in love with. It, it, you know, big part of it, it was saving us some money. Um, and then as the months went on, we began to realize that that house was not for us. It didn't fit us the way that this condo did. So despite all of the seeming, you know, ridiculousness uh, of it and being a little bit like, you know, just throwing away the idea that we had to be embarrassed by any, by any of this, you know, we decided to move back into this condo and just admit that we made maybe, I mean, I think it was the best decision for us to make at the time. Um, it really let us have that grass, you know, the grass is greener, you know, experience. Because obviously when we were in this condo, we were stressed. And so we started picking all the things that we didn't like about this condo. And then we moved to the house and then we found that there was a lot more that we didn't like about the house, you know? So then we wanted to be back at the condo. And the lesson for that, you know, of that, of all of that for us was, you know, to just, you know, soften into, you know, I don't even want to say that we made a mistake in moving out of this place, but we, we just softened into the experience that, that, that it was for us, you know, and every, and as exhausting it was moving an entire house, because we have lots, like every single piece of furniture down to the, every single fork and knife in this home we own, which is not common for Costa Rica. Quite often you rent houses fully furnished here. Um, we moved all of that with a 15 month old baby and a, and a crazy dog in, in, a, you know, a, in the rainy season here in Costa Rica. Despite all of that, we were just so grateful and so appreciative of this home and everything that it you know, is, is offering to us now as we move into this big transition back into this new normal, whatever that's gonna mean for us. I'm gonna be going back to work after you know, essentially another mini mat leave, which is a bit you know, terrifying. I'm a little bit anxious about that. Obviously, I've spent the last eight months home with my daughter and all of a sudden I have to separate from her again. Um, so there's a lot that goes along with it, but we're just really grateful that we've made all the decisions that we've made and learned all of the lessons that we've learned through this through this entire period. I've also started, you know, I started some side businesses and was running myself to the bone working on all of these side business businesses during this pandemic. 
um, to the point of I, that, that I was, I think, quite adrenally fatigued. I lost a little bit too much weight and I was not feeling connected to my life or my loved ones. So I had to brush all of those little busyness projects to the side and just start really becoming more present in my life and appreciating everything that I have and trusting that everything was going to work out the way that it was supposed to, even if I made some decisions that were maybe not the best decisions at the time and maybe disappointed some people in the process. So that's, that's my, big, my big thing that I wanted to just talk to because I have a lot of friends that have had, been having a lot of the same experiences. You know, we may have made decisions during this time, this very uncertain time that we are, you know, looking back on as maybe not the, the most beneficial, um, but realizing the lessons and then really being able to circle back around to, to gratitude for everything that we have in this life. I mean, like my earrings, you know, when you have, when you're handed lemons in life, make lemonade. And aren't these amazing, by the way? <laughs> Early birthday present from my partner, Levi. I'll sport some different ones next week. Um, and the two other things that I wanted to mention here today on this Facebook Live, and if there is, if there's any of this is resonating with you or if you think anyone could use a little message from Rhythmia and me today, please share this video. Um, just a reminder that you know at Rhythmia, we're always our goal is there to is is to create miracles, and the entire process that we invite our guests to to flow through and expand through while they're at Rhythmia for the week is you know to to find their miracle, which we like to you know if you ever see Jerry's Tuesday Lives, he always talks about it. It's about emerge your back, emerging emerging back with your soul, a reconnection to your ultimate truth, to the you know the powerful spiritual being that you are, remembering that you are perfect. Um, and finding that miracle moment because all of them a miracle is really just surrender surrendering to the highest possibility of unification You know and that can be such a grand 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 notion and it can also just mean the small Unifications, you know that we experience on day-to-day -day basis, you know, so we surrender to the fact that our highest You know the our highest place to be and the most perfect place for us to be was in this condo, you know, and just remembering that it's all in the surrendering where you just have to sometimes let go and let flow. Um, and another thing that I wanted to mention here today is because I got a great email from a, a teacher that I've been working with a little bit online uh, this week. Um, and she actually had forwarded an email from Gabby Bernstein. And Gabby was talking a lot about when you're, she was feeling exceptionally helpless the day that, that she recorded this video. And she was just sending out the message that when you are feeling helpless, help someone. And, and that really resonated with me because especially right now in the world that we're in, a lot of people need help, you know, we, and, and support and love. And sometimes that means, you know, actually going out and, and being active in, in helping some, someone or an organization that you care about. Maybe it means just picking up the phone and calling someone and checking in and telling them that you're thinking about them and you care about them. Maybe it means, you know, cleaning out your closet and donating to those in, you know, those in need or less, you know, affluent than you currently are feeling in your life. There's so many ways that you can reach out and help other people when you're feeling helpless and automatically it really does shift the way that you're feeling. When you're able to help someone, you, you can't help but feel less helpless. So that was the, the, the little tidbit that I wanted to leave you guys with today because I, I found that's really helped me in the last little while just being able to to help and even if it's even if I just reach out um, to people that I know could use some love and even if they don't accept my help the fact that you know that I've offered it to them and then they, then I, they know what's there and my hand is always there for them it feels really 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 powerful and really really good um, and reminds me how 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 lucky we are um, lucky I am and, and grateful to be where I am in this world right now. So that was the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys here today as we shift into this new new normal Whatever that means and whatever it's gonna look like because we don't know we have no clue We have no like all we have is right now All we know is you know what's going on in this actual moment right here and now as every single second ticks by so my only prayer for everyone is that we can trust that we can Forget about yesterday, stop worrying about tomorrow, and really just, you know, sit with how you're feeling right now, what it is that you can do for yourself right now, what it is that you can do for others right now. Reconnect with yourself. Remember that little boy or girl that lives deep, deep inside of you that needs your love. Give them that. Send them your, your, your warmth, your thoughts, and, 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 and may you continue to stay connected to yourself or begin that process 
and hopefully you can continue that process in a very deep and powerful way at Rhythmia with us at, with us sometime soon because we are reopened now for bookings. Right now we're only having the people that were already booked for November and December are coming for the next two months and then we are now taking reservations for January onwards. So if you're at all curious, do not hesitate to call call the 1-800 number and talk to one of our reservation specialists. They can answer all of your questions and give you a lot more information. That is all I have for you guys here today. I cannot wait to see you next week. Join me next week is we're talking 40 candles because someone might be turning 40 next week. It's me. All right guys, ciao. Have a beautiful weekend and a beautiful week ahead. Love you.